What's up y'all, I'm Taylor Brower, and today we're gonna check out what the experience is like developing software on the MacBook Pro with the M1 chip. For reference, I'm using the 16 gigabyte model with one terabyte solid state hard drive, and I'm gonna be using iTerm throughout this video because iTerm comes with the Rosetta translation layer out of the box by default. Um, I'm gonna try some various command line tools using C, C++, Perl, Scala, Java, and we're gonna see how those perform. And then I'm gonna move on to languages that require a little bit more heavy lifting, like Angular, Vue.js, Node.js. Uh, we'll try Spring Boot, and then uh, Android Studio, and finally Flutter. So let's go ahead and check them out. Let's dive in. That was me diving in. Now it's your turn, dive in, let's go. So we're gonna start by looking at command line programs. And here I have various command line programs that we're gonna try in C, C++, Java, Scala, and Lisp in Python. So we're gonna try all those. Typically you would see these applications in university if you're taking classes, or you would see them in kind of like a systems programming or data science or um, even machine learning kind of scenario. You'd be using tools like these. So let's see. How they perform. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to open up uh, a C program here at the start. So we'll just say greeting.c. We'll take a look at that. Here's the code for this program. So it's just going to go through and it's going to print out hello YouTube from C on M1. And that's kind of going to be the theme of all these uh, programs. They're just going to print that out. So I'm going to close this up and then we're going to compile this with GCC. W also enable all warnings, dash G for debugging. We're gonna give it an output and then feed in the file. Okay, no errors, so we are compiled. We're gonna execute it. And it says, hello YouTube from C on M1. Now let's take a look at greeting dot C++, so this is the same program, prints the same message, hello YouTube from C++ on M1. We're gonna go ahead and compile that with GCC using all the same flags as before. Uh, we'll name this greeting CPP and then greeting.cpp. Okay. That's compiled, we'll go ahead and run that. And there's our message. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and we'll try Perl. So we'll do Perl. Let me show you the program. You know, uh, greeting.perl. That's not the program. Uh, oh, it's greeting.pl. Okay, so here, same thing. Go ahead and close out of that. And then to run this, we'll just do Perl greeting.pl and we get the message. Now let's try Python, nano greeting.py. Okay, there it is in Python. We'll go ahead and use Python 3 greeting.py, prints it out. Next, let's look at the Lisp one. So greeting.lisp, .lisp, okay. And this is just printing out the text string. Lisp is a, a little weird. I didn't care to really figure out how to print out an array of strings. Um, so we're gonna run this with clisp greeting dot lisp. Okay, and there we go. Hello YouTube from list on M1. Now the next one we'll do is uh, Scala. So let me open that up. Greeting dot Scala. Okay, and here we are printing an array of strings. Greetings from Scala on M1. Okay, so for Scala, we're gonna do Scala, whoa. Okay. We're gonna do Scala C greeting dot Scala T 
to compile that. And Scala uses the, the JVM, so it's kind of similar compilation to Java. So then we'll do Scala capital greeting because of that class that it made. And you can see we have greetings from Scala on M1. Next, we're going to do Java. So we're going to do Java C. Let me show you the program. You know, um, greeting.java. OK. There's that. And now we're going to go ahead and compile it with Java C. We'll give this a capital greeting.java. Because if we don't name the file the same as the class, Java gets all upset. And then we'll do Java greeting. And there you go. Hello, YouTube from Java on M1. Wow, that was surprisingly faster than Scala. It's kind of interesting. And I believe that's it. Let's see. We did C, C++, Lisp, Python, Perl, Scala. Yeah, so that's it for the command line. So now let's move on to programming languages that require an IDE to really help out development. And that's going to require more resources from the system. So let's see how that kind of fares. OK, now we're to the part where we're going to use IDEs to kind of see how those fare on M1 with programming languages that require a bit more power. So we're at the command line here. We just finished running all our command line applications. And I'm going to show you some web, de web development programming languages in the terminal. But first, I want to turn attention to RStudio. Um, this is a data science or machine learning IDE that you would typically use for those kinds of applications. And we're just going to go ahead and run one of the demo applications that comes out of the box with RStudio. This particular demo application is called Graphics. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. OK, so we just have started the demo graphics application. So now I'm just going to hit Enter to quickly click, click through this. So that's one iteration. Every time you hit Enter, it does another iteration. And now we've reached the end. So, okay, and now you see that it's rendered out the various plots. And we can cycle through them going left or right here. OK. And now next we're going to move on to some web development programs. So the first one we're going to start out with is React. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to my React application here. Here's our React application. It just is hello React from React on M1. So if we go to our terminal, uh, do npm start, it's going to compile our React application and then open up a terminal here, or a new browser window. And it says, hello from React on M1. OK, so next we're going to do a Angular application. All right, so here's our Angular application. And in the application component TS, you can see hello from Angular on M1. So we're going to go to our terminal. And we are just going to go into here and run npm start. All right, that is compiled. So now we're going to go to our browser. And we're going to go to localhost 4200. And hello from Angular on M1. All right, next up is we're going to try out Vue.js. And here is the code for this. And we have our message string here. If we go to app view, or if you go to hello world, or if you go to app view, sorry. Here it says hello from view on M1. OK. Now let's go to our terminal. And we're going to go ahead and type in, uh, go into the greetings application. And we're going to type in npm run serve. Our Vue.js development server is starting. We're running. Go to Chrome. And we're going to go to local host 8080 and then hello from view on M1. All right. Next up is going to be Node.js. Okay, so we have our Node.js application here. You can see that we are just 
have a route here that says hello from Node.js on M1. So whenever we start our server, it should just route us right to that. We'll go here. We're gonna do into our greeting folder. Unless there is no greeting folder. Yeah, this one is just, okay. So we're gonna do npm start. And you can see it's already running. That was super fast. Uh, we're gonna go to localhost 5000. And you can see hello from Node.js on M1. Okay, next on the web development list is Spring Boot. So this one, we're not gonna use the command line. We're just gonna simply run it. We're gonna go to application properties. And if we go to the controller, we can see we have our controller endpoint there. And if we go to our M1 chip, we can actually see our well, our service actually, you can see our stuff here. So we're gonna go ahead and just run that. So this is building and compiling right now. All right, and that is built. So we're gonna go ahead and go to Chrome and we're gonna go to local host 8081. And you can see we've hit our Spring Boot route. There's the name and everything there. So this is what we can do with web development programs to run applications. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna check out what the experience is like developing mobile apps on this computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and I'm gonna open Android Studio. So we have our application here and we can see that we have our AVD selected. And when we hit run, we're gonna see something interesting. So it's gonna, it's gonna do a Gradle build and it's gonna run. And if we click on our build tab here, we can see that everything is building and we have build successful in roughly seven seconds, which is pretty fast. But we don't have any emulator popping up. Typically at this point, you would have an emulator popping up showing you your application running on the Android screen, but we don't have that. So if we go to run, we can see that we get an error because unfortunately, if you're planning on developing Android apps on M1, it's not gonna work. It's, it's flat out not gonna work. Like you, you can't develop Android apps on M1 right now. Um, and that's just an unfortunate thing right now. Hopefully they will have a solution soon. But as of right now, there's no development of Android apps on M1. But now let's turn our attention to Flutter. Let's see what developing iOS apps is like on Flutter. So we're gonna go here. We're going to minimize this. Okay, so now we have Flutter pulled up. You can see we have just our typical application here. Hello from Flutter on M1. And we are just putting it in a material app using Scaffold with an app bar and a body with text. So we're just gonna go ahead and start this. We need to select our device. So we'll say open iOS simulator. You can see that is opening here. So this simulation is working fine. So we're gonna go ahead and hit play. Here we are compiling with Xcode. You can see that down there. Running Xcode build. The build is done. Okay. And everything is built and we're running. You can see hello from Flutter on M1 and then we have the same text down here. So this should really give you an idea of what it is like to develop on the M1 chips. Now, something you might be thinking is, yeah, we ran through the CLI programs and we ran through these web development tools and data science and also mobile development tools, but we don't actually get a feel for the performance of M1. So typically when you're looking for a development machine, you wanna be sure that 
you're gonna be able to build big apps with this thing and it's gonna perform. You're gonna be able to build enterprise apps, you're gonna be, be able to build apps for clients and it's gonna perform. Well, what I didn't show you is the entire time that we were compiling and running these programs on this machine, I had Cinebench R23 running and it, it's just been going on a loop um, throughout the entire time. And this is to kind of simulate what your machine would be like under load developing these things. And I mean, as you can see, here's what we're hitting here during that time. We're at 6586. This is full tilt. This is full tilt of the CPU um, compiling all these programs and running through them. If you, if we look at Chrome, we can see I never stopped any of these servers. They're all still running. I can refresh. They're all still running. And we can open up the activity monitor. We can see that <laughs> we have no CPU to spare. Um, and our memory is at 12.18 gigs memory used. And then we're using about 5.73 gigs of swap. So the, the system is using a little bit more memory than it is allocated to because that swap is so high. But I mean, look at the performance that we're getting here. We can open WebStorm. We can cycle through like all of these tabs and it is fast. It is really fast. Um, this thing is no slouch. And again, we're, we are at uh, less than 1% CPU usage doing all this. I can go to the terminal. We can flip through between the tabs and we're sipping away at battery life. So if that doesn't convince you that, uh, that M1 is an incredible chip, that programming on the MacBook Pro M1 uh, is super fast, then I, you're just gonna have to get an M1 for yourself and experience it for yourself because uh, this is pretty incredible. Um, that's, that's really it guys, so thank you for watching. I hope you learned something from this video. Leave a, leave a like, leave a comment down below letting me know what you thought of this video, what else you would like to see in addition to this video. And um, yeah, take it easy guys. See you in the next one.